This is Lesson 25 in our Calculus 2 series, Polar Curves. Remember that in rectangular coordinates, Cartesian coordinates, if we have the equation x equals c, where c is a constant, that gives us a vertical line. And similarly, y equals d gives us a horizontal line, where d is constant. But in polar coordinates, what do we get? In polar coordinates, r equals c, where c is constant, is a circle of radius r centered at the origin because it's all the points that have a radial distance to the origin of c. For example, r equals 2 is a set of points in the plane whose distance to the origin is 2. This is the set r is equal to 2. If we have theta equals a constant, that's going to be a line through the origin at angle theta. For example, theta equals pi over 4 is a set of points that can be described as r comma pi over 4. And this is with positive or negative r values. The points on this branch of the line have positive r values. The points on this branch of the line have negative r values with theta equals pi over 4. So the equation theta equals pi over 4 gives us this entire line of points. Now I'd like you to sketch the region in the plane where r is greater than 2 and less or equal to 5, and theta is greater than 3 pi over 4 and less than 5 pi over 4. So I want you to start by graphing r equals 2, r equals 5, theta equals 3 pi over 4, theta equals 5 pi over 4, and then try to figure out what region this is describing. So please pause the video and work on that. So we start by drawing our two circles, r equals 2 and r equals 5. Now notice that we have the strict inequality, r is greater than 2, not equal to 2. I'm putting a dotted line here for this circle, because we're not including those points. Now let's sketch in theta equals 3 pi over 4 and theta equals 5 pi over 4. And again, both of these will have dotted lines because we're not including the points on these lines. So this line is theta equals 3 pi over 4, and this one is theta equals 5 pi over 4. So we want the region where the r values are between 2 and 5, and the theta values are between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So that's this region. Now let's find a Cartesian equation for the curve. We're given r equals 2 sine theta plus 2 cosine theta. And we want to find an equation in x and y that represents the same set of points. Well, what do we know about our relationships between x, y, r, and theta? We know that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So when I look at this, I see a sine theta and I'm thinking, boy, I wish there's an r in front of it. Same thing with my cosine theta. I wish there was an r in front of it. So what can I do? I can multiply this entire equation by r. That's going to give us r squared is equal to 2r sine theta plus 2r cosine theta. And so now we're here. And that's great because we know that 2r sine theta is 2y, 2r cosine theta is 2x, and we know that r square is x square plus y square. So now we have this equation completely in terms of x and y. But we don't normally see our equations written in this form. So really what we need to do is complete the square and identify this curve. Completing the square, remember we're going to collect our x's and our y's all to one side. And so we have x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus 2y is equal to 0. To write this as x minus something squared, we want to take this negative 2 and we want to divide it by 2. We get negative 1. This is going to be x minus 1 quantity squared. But x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I need to put a plus 1 here so I can regroup these three terms that way. And if I'm going to add 1 to this side of the equal sign, I need to add 1 to that side of the equal sign as well. 
Same thing is happening here, y squared minus 2y. We want to write this as y minus 1 quantity squared. But y minus 1 squared is y squared minus 2y plus 1. So I need a plus 1 over here as well. And so I have to add it to the other side of the equal sign as well. So we have x minus 1 quantity square plus y minus 1 quantity square is equal to 2. And so that tells us we have the circle centered at 1, 1 with radius radical 2. And this is a better form of the solution of the equation in x and y. Let's take a look at another. Let's find the Cartesian equation for this curve. R equals tan theta secant theta. I want you to take a few minutes, pause the video, and work on this. Remember that we're trying to get this in terms of x and y. We know that tan theta is equal to y over x, so let's start there. We replace the tan theta by y over x, and then what else can we do? Well, we know that secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. We have an r over here and a cosine theta over here. We would love to be able to put those together because r cosine theta is equal to x. So let's multiply both sides by cosine theta. If we do that, we have r cosine theta on the left and we still have y over x on the right. So we have x equals y over x or y is equal to x squared. And so this is a Cartesian equation to represent the same curve. Now let's find a polar equation for this Cartesian equation. We're given x plus y is equal to 9. Well, we know that x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, so we have r cosine theta plus r sine theta is equal to 9. And right now we have this equation in terms of r and theta. But if we can, we prefer to get it in the form r equals f of theta. r is a function of theta. So we want to solve for r if we can. And so here we're going to factor out the r and then divide by the remaining factor. So we have r equals 9 over cosine theta plus sine theta. And so this line, x plus y equals 9, can be represented in polar coordinates this way. Now let's take a look at plotting polar curves. We'll start by sketching the graph of r equals 2 cosine theta. Now, to sketch a polar curve, we always want to start with the sketch of that same equation in rectangular r theta coordinates. So what does r equals 2 cosine theta look like in rectangular coordinates? So here we have our theta axis, and here is our r axis. And r equals 2 cosine theta is our basic cosine theta stretched by a factor of 2. So that looks like this. And when we make these sketches, we want to be clear about our period and about any points of intersection with our curve and the theta axis. And now we're going to translate this information onto a polar graph. And the first thing that we want to do is identify the important features of this graph. And so by that I mean find the theta values for which r is equal to 0, and find the theta values where r is maximized and minimized. And we want to note the intervals on theta where r is positive and negative, and where r is increasing and decreasing. So I'm going to take this same rectangular graph of r equals 2 cosine theta, and I'm going to mark it up with all the important information. So I notice that r is equal to 0 at theta equals pi over 2 and at theta equals 3 pi over 2. I notice there's a maximum r value of 2 at theta equals 0 and again at theta equals 2 pi. And we have a minimum r value of r equals negative 2 at theta equals pi. We also see that as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, r is decreasing and r is positive. Then after pi over 2, from pi over 2 to pi, r is still decreasing, but now the r values are negative. Theta going from pi to 3 pi over 2 has r increasing, but still negative. And then theta from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi has r increasing and positive. So now how can we get this information onto polar coordinates? Well, we're going to start with 
theta equals 0, r equals 2. So here's theta equals 0, the positive x-axis, and r is going out to 2 units. So we're going to start here. Now as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, we see that our radius is decreasing from 2 to 0. And if we want to get even more information, we know that r is going to be equal to 1 at pi over 3. Because remember, this is r equals 2 cosine theta, and we know that cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. So at an angle of pi over 3, we're going to have a radius of 1. So we know that r is decreasing as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. So it's going to look something like that. Now, as theta goes from pi over 2 to pi, r is decreasing from 0 to negative 2. So now, as theta goes from pi over 2 to pi, we're in the second quadrant, but our radius values are negative. So that means we're going to be sketching in the fourth quadrant. And again, if we want to identify a point on this interval, we know that r is going to be negative 1 when theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is here, and so negative 1 is going to be about here for an angle of 2 pi over 3. That is a radius negative 1. So, so from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3, we're starting from 0 and we're going towards a negative 1. And then we're increasing in magnitude but getting more and more negative as the angle goes from, from 2 pi over 3 to pi. So for these angle values here, we're sketching here. And so when theta is equal to pi, we have a radius of negative 2, and so we're here. Now it looks like we completed the graph. Let's see what happens if we continue on from here. As theta goes from pi to 3 pi over 2, we're talking about these angles in here. But these radius values are negative, so we're going to be sketching in the first quadrant. And notice here, radius starts at negative 2, that's this point here, 2 comma 0. And the radius is then increasing to 0, or getting smaller in magnitude to 0. And so that's just going to retrace this graph that we have. So actually, we already completed the graph from 0 to pi. And you can notice by changing this into Cartesian coordinates that we'd have the equation of a circle centered at 1 comma 0 with radius 1. So I'll leave that for you as an exercise. But this is the circle centered at 1 comma 0 with radius 1. Now let's take a look at plotting the polar curve r equals 1 minus sine theta. I'd like you to try this sketch in the same manner. So first, set up your graph of r equals 1 minus sine theta in rectangular r theta coordinates, and then make all the important marks on it so you can point out all the important information, and then translate that onto a polar graph. So please pause the video and work on that. So to get the sketch of r equals 1 minus sine theta in r theta rectangular coordinates, first I'm going to start with r equals sine theta. And then I'm going to negate it, so I have r equals negative sine theta. And then I want to shift it up one unit to give us the graph of r equals negative sine theta plus 1, or r equals 1 minus sine theta. So that looks like this in rectangular r theta coordinates. And so now we want to translate this onto polar coordinates. And so we start by identifying all the important information on the rectangular graph. 
we notice that we have a maximum radius of r equals 2 at theta is equal to 3 pi over 2, and a minimum radius of r equals 0 at theta equals pi over 2. We also know that because we shifted this graph up one unit, we know that at theta equals pi, we have r is equal to 1, and that's a good point to keep in mind for our graph. We also notice that r is decreasing as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, then r increases as theta goes from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, and then r decreases again as theta goes from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. So let's take a look at how we can translate this information onto polar coordinates. So we're starting here with theta equals 0, r equals 1. So theta equals 0 is our positive x-axis, and r equals 1 tells us to go out one unit in that direction, and so we're starting here. And now we have, as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, r is decreasing to 0. So as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2, we have r decreasing to 0. Now as theta goes from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, we have r increasing. And we know that at theta equals pi, r is equal to 1. So we have r positive and increasing as theta goes from pi over 2 to pi to 3 pi over 2. So we know that theta is increasing to positive 1 and then it continues to increase and when we get to 3 pi over 2 we're at our maximum radius of 2. So at 3 pi over 2, we're at our maximum radius of 2, so theta continues to increase and looks something like that. Now for theta going from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, we have r decreasing from 2 to 1. So it's actually going to be symmetric and look like that. And so this we call a cardioid because it looks like a heart. And that's our sketch of r equals 1 minus sine theta. Now let's take a look at another polar curve. For example, r equals e to the theta over 4. We want to approach this in the same way that we normally do by making a sketch in rectangular r theta coordinates. So here we have an exponential graph. We know that when theta is equal to 0, r is equal to e to the 0, which is 1. We know that as theta goes to negative infinity, r goes to 0. And as theta goes to positive infinity, r goes to infinity. So our sketch for r equals e to the theta over 4 looks like this. And so translating that into polar coordinates is going to give us a spiral. So let's take a look at this point here, 0, 1. So we're saying that when theta is equal to 0, r is equal to 1. On this graph, when theta is equal to 0, r is equal to 1 is this point here. Now, as theta goes towards negative infinity, r approaches 0. So as we go negative with theta, and we continue to approach negative infinity with theta, the angle keeps rotating in the clockwise direction. Our radius values get smaller and smaller, approaching 0. As theta goes towards positive infinity, our radius values get bigger and bigger, approaching infinity. So as theta goes to positive infinity, it means we're going counterclockwise, our radius values are getting bigger and bigger. So we've got this spiral graph. So keep in mind that all of the polar graphing works the same way. You should always start with the graph in rectangular r theta coordinates, find all the important information on that graph, and then translate it to polar coordinates. And you're going to see more of this in Lesson 26 as we compute polar areas. But now we'll continue with this lesson.
Now let's take a look at finding the slope of a polar curve. Remember that for r equals f of theta, the equation of a polar curve, f prime of theta is equal to dr d theta. That's the change in r with respect to a change in theta. But that's not going to give us the slope of the curve as it's graphed in the plane. The slope is still going to be dy dx. And so we need to compute dy dx in terms of theta in order to find the slope of the curve at any given point. So we want to think of the polar curve as a parametric curve and find dy dx as we did in lesson 23. So for r equals f of theta, we know that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So x is equal to f of theta cosine theta and y is equal to f of theta sine theta. And so dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. And so using the product rule, we get f prime of theta sine theta plus f of theta cosine theta for the numerator and f prime of theta cosine theta minus f of theta sine theta for the denominator. And so, for example, to find the slope of the tangent line to r equals 1 minus sine theta at the point where theta is equal to pi, we write f of theta equals 1 minus sine theta, and we compute f prime of theta, which in this case is negative cosine theta. And we'll plug into our formula for dy dx here, and we get negative cosine theta sine theta plus 1 minus sine theta cosine theta over negative cosine square theta minus 1 minus sine theta times sine theta. And plugging in theta equals pi gives us a value of 1 for dy dx. So we found that the slope of this curve at the point theta equals pi is equal to 1. Now this is a curve that we graphed earlier. So what we just found is a slope at theta equals pi, the slope is equal to 1. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on polar curves.